here up front. Plus, we'll also take a break this morning at probably around 10.15 or 10.30. Um, that'll work out to, we'll say, two hours and 40 minutes total for the hearing, which will be 80 minutes per side. Uh, I'll run a clock. We'll, we have to break at 11.30. If we're not done by then, um, then we can come back at 2, assuming anybody has time remaining to them at that point, and there's still business to be done. Um, we'll go ahead and go on the record. If you're ready, Madam Court Reporter. Um, we're on the record in cause number D1FM15. 003596 in the interest of FFC. Um, this is a hearing on uh, temporary orders, discovery disputes, various other disputes in a family case. Um, the hearing is being conducted live on Zoom. It's being live streamed on the court's YouTube channel. The record of the hearing is being made by Della Duet, who is the official court reporter for the 455th District Court. The court does not allow anyone to make any audio or visual recording, uh, video recording of these proceedings. Any violation of this is subject to the contempt power of the court. That rule applies both to the folks here in the Zoom as well as anyone who's tuning in on YouTube. The uh, parties will utilize the application box to the extent necessary to offer and exchange exhibits. Um, Council, will you state your name for the record, please? Daryl Weinman, I'm here for Ray Sal. And uh, the father, is it Mr. Champagne? Is that how you pronounce your last name? Yes, yes, Judge Howell. My name is Taryn Champagne and you pronounce it correctly. Okay, uh, and you're here representing yourself, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, then why don't we get started? Um, obviously, there's several motions and things that have been filed. There, initially, I guess in June, there was a petition to modify the parent-child relationship. Um, and that was filed by or on behalf of the mother in this case. Um, and so... Um, Mr. Champagne, I'm not sure if you've represented yourself in court before, but um, the way we'll proceed is I think I'm going to start by hearing from Ms. Weinman up front and uh, get an overview of what the issues are that she has teed up. Uh, you don't have to raise your hand. I'll ask for you when I'm ready. Uh, hold hold I'm, on. You, you don't know. You don't get to tell me. Hold on. All right, Mr. Champagne. I have a special appearance, uh, Judge. I have a special appearance and according to rule- Mr. Champagne, 28, please stop talking. Mr. Champagne, please stop talking. Judge Howell, um, I, I just want to um, say- to Stephanie, will you please mute, Mr. Champagne? Uh, Mr. Champagne, if you continue to attempt to interrupt me, I will hold you in contempt. Do you understand what that means? May I speak? No. Can you please not explain yet. that Not yet. Me? No, not yet. You may not. This hearing is not going to go very well for you if you continue to interrupt me. You will get an opportunity to speak, but um, if, if you continue to interrupt me and attempt to talk over me, Ms. Duet cannot do her job, and it is, I am telling you now, I will consider it to be contemptuous behavior, um, and that's not going to go well for you. So I understand you have a special appearance. You'll get to a chance to make your argument in support of that, uh, but we are going to proceed according to my procedure, and that's how it's going to work, Mr. Champagne. Um, as I said... Uh, I'm going to hear from Ms. Weinman first. I want to hear an overview of the mission, the, the issues that are teed up today. And then uh, after that, Mr. Champagne, I will hear a response from you. And if you have argument you want to offer, then I will let you know when it's time to offer that. Ms. Weinman. Um, it's 10.15. Why don't we take a uh, five-minute break? We'll come back at 10.20. Um, I can tell you, Ms. Weinman, that was 27 minutes of direct plus the 16 that you've already used. That's 43 minutes you've used of your 80. Um, so you have 37 minutes remaining to you. Uh, we'll come back at 1020. Thank you.
Sorry, Stephanie Rincon is not available. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Hi, Stephanie. My name is Jeff Morgan. I'm calling from Dallas, Texas, and I was wondering why the hearing with Taryn Champagne was interrupted. There is a background in legal standards that the judge must uphold. The public right to access remote hearings during the COVID-19 pandemic. This was written by District Judge Roy Ferguson. And the public has the right to reasonable notice and access to court proceedings, both civil and criminal. Um, the Sixth Amendment of the Constitution affords the defendants the right to a public trial. And that is extended to um, Texas through the 14th Amendment, the juvenile justice cases. The Supreme Court has held that the press and the public have a similar independent right under the First Amendment to attend all criminal proceedings in both federal and state courts. Um, the courts must ensure and accommodate public attendance at court hearings. In some instances, improper and unjustified closure of court proceedings constitutes structural error requiring automatic reversal and the grant of a new trial. There are constitutional issues at stake. The First Amendment, be First Amendment belongs to the public, not to the parties, and it is the court's affirmative burden to ensure meaningful and unfettered access to court proceedings. In fulfilling this burden, the court must take all reasonable measures necessary to ensure public access. Lack of access to a single hearing, the suppression, such as happened in hour number two, or even a portion of a single hearing, the voir dire, is enough to mandate reversal and a new trial. The courts must find a practical and effective way to enable public access to virtual court proceedings. Choosing not to provide reasonable and meaningful public access to remote court proceedings at this time may equate to constitutional error and mandate reversal. Um, this is a, a, a burden that is upon the court to make sure that we have access to these hearings. It is a constitutional issue. The court shall remain open. And once again, terminating or interrupting live stream without an alternative means for, public, for the public to view the hearing, even temporarily, would constitute a complete closure and a higher burden would apply. So I am going to ask that the judge be notified that we are watching. Uh, I want the public, I want the hearings to be public on YouTube once again as they should be. And I intend at this point to file a complaint with the State Commission on Judicial Conduct about this type of egregious behavior by the judge. Um, this needs to be, this will be, um, we will be, be going forth with this. Thank you very much. And once again, I look forward to seeing the rest of the hearing online on YouTube. The judge is now notified. Thank you.